after the unknown war, people started seeing him flickering out there on the horizon like a candle. He was called a lot of things. Joe Glow, the man of mass destruction, the walking bomb. Today on the Comic Book Report, Geiger, the deluxe edition hardcover. Stick around and check it out. Greetings everyone, my name is Dominic and today you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. And today I can't wait to jump back into the world of Image Comics' Ghost Machine imprint with the Geiger Deluxe Edition hardcover. This is part of the unnamed shared universe over at Ghost Machine that has other titles like Junkyard Joe and The Red Coat to name a few. Now I did read the paperback once upon a time, I actually reviewed it on the channel, but I am elated to finally look at this Deluxe Edition. And to that end, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to Ghost Machine for sending this review copy. This was a real blast to revisit some of this content, and I can't wait to talk about it today. So let's get started. First, some quick facts about today's collection. The issues in this volume were written primarily by Jeff Johns, and penciled primarily by Gary Frank. The comics in this volume were published by Image Comics beginning in 2021. The volume itself collects Geiger, issues 1 through 6, and portions of Geiger 80-page giant issue 1. And finally, this is an over-oversized hardcover edition coming in at 272 pages with beautiful glossy print paper stock and a glued binding. At this time, I'd like to go ahead and issue a general spoiler warning. I will be flipping through the contents of today's collection and commenting on plot points throughout. You've been advised. Okay, and here's our first look at that deluxe edition from Image Comics, and right from the jump, I'm going to go ahead and mention again, this is in fact one of the over-oversized formats. This is much bigger than an omnibus. In fact, I'll go ahead and do a size comparison to some other common formats in a little bit to give you some perspective. As far as the cover, though, it is very similar to what we found on the trade paperback collection for this series. We have this cool, like, Geiger hazard sign against kind of grayscale flooring. It all just looks really good. The spine as well has the image logo, that kind of stylized font for Geiger, things like that. And it's cool because the image kind of wraps around a little bit, which is nice to see. Having an almost slate gray for part of the cover, I think it is a little bit understated in many ways, especially since so much of the book glows green, but I am happy they went a bit subdued with the cover design and graphics here. I do think it looks really nice on a bookcase. And on the back cover, of course, who is the glowing man with that radioactive symbol? Just really evocative and cool. Again, it kind of carries over a lot of the design elements from the front and the spine. We have some blurbs about the book, what it contains, pricing information, things like that all pretty standard fare for your cover and if you can't tell this does not include a dust jacket that's right it's a hardcover edition without a dust jacket but i honestly don't think it's necessary this is a really nice looking book and now let's go ahead and take a look at that binding as i said you can definitely see some glued in it is there some sewing in here as well it's kind of hard to say but definitely some glued binding a flat spine i will say the pages are a little stiff it doesn't lay down perfectly flat but there really wasn't much gutter loss at all we have some nice borders around the panels. And now, as promised, here's a quick size comparison for you for some of the other formats. I have my old Geiger trade paperback that I bought when it was coming out next to this, of course, the deluxe edition, and it just absolutely towers over that trade paperback. For those that maybe don't know, a trade paperback is the same dimensions as a floppy single issue, uh, and it's considered kind of the standard comic size. So this is definitely much, much bigger. For the next comparison, I went ahead and grabbed the Superman Secret Order Origin Deluxe Edition I have from DC Comics, which is also by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank. This Deluxe Edition is your sizing that you have for things like Omnibus Editions. So again, you can see how this Geiger Deluxe Edition just towers over the standard Deluxe formats or Omnibus collection sizes. And even with the size comparison, I don't think it really does this book justice. It feels just massive, and yet it is comfortable to hold and read. It's kind of a marvel. 
Okay, now as we make our way into the collection proper, we have some beautiful end pages that are kind of those caustic, radioactive-looking yellowy-orange. Uh, I just really like it. It absolutely sets a tone. We have some kind of title pages, publication information pages, things like that. And then we jump right into the first issue of Geiger. And I love that each of the issues have a cover that's faithfully reproduced with a, kind of the title number of the issue, as well as kind of a cool border. It just makes everything feel super themed throughout this collection and I like that we just get to see the covers as we go but yeah we jump right into Geiger issue one and I will say for those that are collecting Geiger off the shelf these days from Ghost Machine they did do a new series which is considered a volume two this is the volume one this is the original Geiger series that's in this deluxe format that we are presenting here just to avoid some confusion there but yes we do have the first six issues and that is how this book kicks off so for those that don't know what what is Geiger? I mentioned it earlier, but it is part of the unnamed shared universe. Now, the unnamed universe is essentially a sequence of new American tall tales. Think something like a Paul Bunyan, these kind of larger-than-life heroes or figures in Americana and history. Well, anyway, this is kind of a refresh and a revamp, providing new ones that are all based around times of war in the nation's history. And to launch this universe, Jeff Johns and Gary Frank and everyone over at Ghost Machine started with Geiger, which happens around this future war. I think Geiger is supposed to be set sometime like 25 years in the future or so after a kind of nuclear war where every Everything is kind of a radioactive wasteland. Humanity survives in pocket communities that are kind of shielded from the radiation. Whenever they're out in these kind of wasteland areas between the communities, they wear these hazmat suits. We have a couple survivors that become these kind of gross cannibalistic people that roam these kind of deserted wastelands. And then we have Geiger himself, Tariq Geiger, our sort of main protagonist in this series. His backstory is that he was a man afflicted with a very aggressive kind of cancer. He was undergoing an experimental treatment to stop this cancer cell. Uh, when this whole nuclear event happened, there was a huge explosion. He was able to usher his family into a bomb shelter on their property, his wife and kids, while he could try to fend them off from neighbors who were trying to basically at gunpoint take the bomb shelter. So he has it sealed away and he watches the nuclear blast happen. And when he comes to, he realizes he's forever changed. We don't know if it's because of the experimental drugs he was taking for his cancer treatment or if it was because of his will to survive and protect his family. But for whatever reason, after the blast, Tariq Geiger now has these radioactive powers. We get this origin and kind of snapshots throughout it, but essentially the nuclear powers, he basically is a nuclear reactor. He glows green. He's super powerful. When he's in that nuclear form, I think he even melts bullets that hit him, things like that. But he'll keep building up this kind of nuclear energy until it ultimately explodes. But we find out that someone helped him along the way and gave him these kind of solid boron dampening rods that he has kind of in this holster in his back that's kind of tied to not a girdle, but sort of a vestment he wears. And when he has these rods in his back, basically it kind of siphons off his nuclear energy so he doesn't cause his own meltdown. But whenever he pulls them off, he can not only use them as offensive weapons, he also starts glowing and getting kind of more radioactive and powerful and things like that. But ultimately, this story is about characters, not only about Tariq, but about a couple of children who are trying to survive in Las Vegas, which is taken over by all of these different uh, casino sort of mob boss rulers. Each casino has its own theme and its own central kind of government, I would say. And basically, we have this one main casino. I think it's called the Camelot or something like that. But it's essentially like a medieval kind of sword and sorcery monarchy kind of themed casino. And the royal family is kind of right now being led by sort of the boy prince who's completely out of his mind trying to prove himself anyway in that casino we have a working mom who has a teen girl who's coming of age and a young son who always seems kind of tired the mom gets caught up in things beyond her um, depth I would say and she tries to basically do one final gambit to get her kids out safe ultimately mobsters show up at their house and the mom and the kids are fleeing in terror with what they believe is the nuclear football that has the, all the launch codes for the remaining nuclear missile silos around the U.S., 
At any rate, they get their hazmat suits and flee Vegas, trying to outrun these essentially mobsters for these casinos. And that's when they encounter Geiger, who kind of saves them and reluctantly befriends them. Again, all throughout this is where we kind of get the peppering of his origin story. We know Geiger's been out in this wasteland guarding his family and the fallout shelter for, I think, decades, you know? His only real uh, companion at this point is a two-headed sort of black wolf dog named Barney. But anyway, he's doing this for what feels like a long time. He's an avid reader. He'll sometimes wander the wastelands uh, in between coming home to find books and things like that. Uh, But urban legends have spread about him. He's already kind of becoming this tall tale or legend in these communities. And the boy prince is trying to find the glowing man and execute him to kind of prove his power to kind of, you know, if he's bigger than the urban legend, how undaunted is his power, right? So anyway, all these things are happening at once. We have Geiger sort of interact with the kids, save their lives, and they ultimately begin to team up. And we find that Geiger sort of starts treating them like his new family because we unfortunately find out through a sequence in a flashback that the boy prince and the kind of royal guard he has from the casino jump Geiger and ultimately blow open the fallout shelter to find that there's only bones inside. We believe believe that sometime soon after the blast, the fallout shelter was compromised and his family died. So we find out that Geiger has been basically standing guard over a graveyard. And this kind of mentally breaks Geiger. He totally maims this King character. But anyway, in the present sequence of events, he kind of now has his new de facto kids that he's looking out for. He's trying to usher them to a place of safety. The mom basically told him they have to get to NORAD uh, because that's the military outpost, the last surviving one. They'll know what to do with the nuclear football. Once they get there, though, the kids basically find out that they are going through kind of a decontamination sequence. They find out the younger son is dying of leukemia, so he can't be admitted, and they're going to euthanize him. Of course, the older sister is not going to let that happen, and we have Geiger breaking out of his containment at NORAD to save the kids, and once again, they're sort of on their own. As they try to escape and flee for another place of safety, the officials, the government agents over at NORAD, ultimately deploy a weapon of the U.S. government, which we find out is Junkyard Joe. Another one of these kind of urban legend, tall tale characters from the unnamed universe. He was put online around the Vietnam War era. That's actually its own separate series, which I did review in trade paperback on the channel once upon a time. That's also getting released in a deluxe edition, I think in the next month month or two, so if you're interested, definitely check out upcoming Ghost Machine releases. But yes, we have a Geiger versus Junkyard Joe face-off that kind of basically becomes the climax of this volume. It's a really epic, cool fight. We find out that Junkyard Joe has been programmed to do this. It's maybe not his main drive or something he's hoping for. And it's funny because in the world of the unnamed, a lot of people treat Junkyard Joe as kind of, again, a mythical-like figure. We also know he had a popular comic stripped based around them and we have little easter eggs about that in this collection they expand upon it more of course in the Junkyard Joe title itself during the epic battle though we have Junkyard Joe effectively breaking the dampening rods for Geiger so he's just getting closer and closer to critical mass as well as Junkyard Joe is able to absorb the radioactive energy so the fight gets pretty intense and ultimately after it's done we have a sequence where Geiger only keeps it together for the sake of the children knowing he doesn't want to harm them, and he tries to hold it together. The resolution of the first six issues ultimately leads to him dropping off the kids at this next refuge that he maybe once took refuge at himself, but he's no longer allowed. We have Geiger kind of fading into the distance now, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but the entire series has a kind of frame narrative of two people talking in the wasteland about this urban legend. So we have at the beginning setting up this whole story that we as readers get to enjoy, and as we wrap all the way around, we have these two characters talking about, well, is Junkyard Joe still out there? What happened? Things like that. And it really lends to that kind of mythic 
uh, legend kind of feel to the whole story, and I really like it. I do think that those first six issues wrapped up the story nicely. In fact, when I first read it, I wasn't sure if this would be the complete resolution for this character, and I think if they stopped here, this would have been a really serviceable ending. But what I like is even in the collection here, we have them talking about, oh, that was really just the beginning of his wanderings, of his adventures. He did so much more. And of course, that's where the volume two of this Geiger series continues on. We have further adventures of Geiger. But that is not all we have in this collection. Nope, we have portions of the 80-page giant Geiger issue, and I love seeing it. Essentially, this is a handful of other stories that are in many cases written and illustrated by other creators, and they tell kind of snapshot background or origin stories uh, for different characters that were maybe just lightly touched on throughout the book. Like, we find out how Geiger met his two-headed dog, Barney. We have a lot of origins for the different casino bosses that were just hinted at or seen very briefly throughout this series. We get to see a little bit of some of the other casinos and other kind of lands in this uh, wasteland in Las Vegas. And overall, that's really what that 80-page giant feels like. It just barely begins to tease at something more. Um, but the whole thing feels kind of like a special feature or a sequence of kind of deleted scenes or little vignettes. Um, I really like it, but it was not the strongest part of the collection for me. I'm still so happy it was included. It definitely fills out the world and it was a great way to showcase other creative talent within this universe, but certainly the main draw for this book for me was those six issues in this deluxe format. I will say the portions of the 80-page giant along with the extras are what we get more than what was included in the trade paperback. So certainly a feature, certainly an asset, and honestly, it rounds out the collection quite nicely. We do have some extras at the back, a couple written things, character profiles, and a really great cover gallery we get to see in this beautiful oversized format. The other thing I will say all throughout this, as you've enjoyed, we have the art of the incredible Gary Frank. This duo with Jeff Johns has been around for a long time, but Gary Frank's art might have never looked as good as I saw here in this book. I just think he's at the height of his powers, and it shows. I love to see the creative sandbox he gets to play with in this wasteland dystopian future. I love all the glowing effects, and honestly, this book just took my breath away. And now now rereading it and seeing it in this over oversized edition, well, I'm convinced this is the way to read it. And that is the Geiger Deluxe Edition oversized hardcover from Ghost Machine over at Image Comics. All that's left to do now is to give this incredible book a grade. For this larger-than-life new American legend presented in a stunning oversized format that itself feels so very large, the comic book report is happy to give Geiger by Jeff Johns and Gary Frank an a. This is absolutely worth the upgrade from the trade paperback, which I also enjoyed, not only for the inclusion of the extras and the portions of the 80-page giant issue, but just for all of the incredible art, all the incredible storytelling reproduced in this incredible size. There was art here that just absolutely jumped from the page. This is an absolute character-driven narrative that I was hooked from cover to cover, and revisiting the story a year or so later, I was pleasantly surprised by how much it not only holds up, but is even better than I remembered. An incredible book. If you've never experienced it for yourself, I think this is the definitive format. Don't miss out on Geiger and all of the other Ghost Machine releases. But let me know what you think in the comments, and thank you so much for watching. This has been the Comic Book Report. Please don't forget to give this video a like, a comment, and maybe check out another one on your way out. Thanks so much. Bye.